Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Bishop Edward Burns, the Bishop of the Diocese of Dallas, Texas, and we are here at St. Monica Church here in Dallas, and I'm with my brother, Bishop, Bishop Kelly, as well as Father Wade Bass, who is the parochial vicar here at the parish, and he will be offering today's homily. My friends, so as to prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries, we take a moment, call to mind our sins and our faults, and we ask God for his gift of forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and of what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized. About 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him. And the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise.
Bishop Burns and Bishop Kelly, on behalf of Father Guadagnoli, we thank you for coming to visit your parishioners at St. Monica Catholic Church. Father Guadagnoli, Father Weinberger, and myself, we pray for you daily at Mass, and we are honored to have you come celebrate a Mass here on this Good Shepherd Sunday, a day in which this parish joins the entire Catholic world in praying for vocations to the priesthood and to the religious life. Let's be honest, bishops and all those gathered with us today, I do find it kind of ironic that the gospel on Good Shepherd Sunday this year, John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10, ends one verse before Jesus actually says the words, I am the Good Shepherd. Now Jesus mentions shepherds in the gospel. It's in the context of tending to the sheepfold. Peter calls in his first letter, Jesus the shepherd and guardian of our souls. But the gospel stops one verse short. We made it to verse 10. We needed verse 11. To hear Jesus himself say the words, I am the good shepherd. That being said, the Lord does use an image to describe himself, but it's a little less flashy, in my opinion. He does not say, I am the good shepherd today. He says, I am the gate. I am the gate for the sheep, which in my humble opinion is a little less marketable than Good Shepherd Sunday, the Sunday of the good gate, but our Lord in his wisdom doubles down and says it twice. So on this Good Shepherd Sunday, when Jesus uses a different name for himself, the gate, what is he trying to teach us? Well, in my own life, the gate that I personally know best is the one that I pass through every single day when I leave my house and walk through the parking lot to the church office and to the church. I never think about this gate except right now in the spring because right to the right of it, there's this giant shrub that in the springtime starts to grow over the passageway right into my path of walking, hindering movements, blocking access, and making for very interesting mornings. When it's raining, I have an umbrella, a cup of coffee. Usually this all happens on a Monday and you can figure out what happens after that. It's a mess. I only see the gate when it's blocked by the shrub. But other than that, it does its job so well that I barely notice it. The best gates go unnoticed because they serve as open doorways for those who are meant to pass through them. And Jesus today claims the title gate because he himself opens the way for us all to eternal life. In his humanity, he suffered and died for our sins, and through this suffering, he opens up to the human race the path to healing from sin and the path toward right relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. The sacrificial death of Jesus Christ on the cross makes him a gate because it makes him the doorway to eternal life. Jesus claims the title gate because, as he tells us, through him he offers us life life in abundance. When we join this Sunday of the Good Shepherd, of Jesus the Good Gate, we also remember the World Day of Prayer for Vocations, because these two together are a, rem a reminder to us that priests are configured to Jesus Christ in their ordination as Christ the Good Shepherd and Christ the Good Gate. The priest who best image Christ the Gate are those whose lives and ministry are open doorways to Jesus Christ. St. John Paul II left the church a treasure of a document called I Will Give You Priests, a document on the formation of the clergy. And he says there that a priest ministry is as humanly as credible and as acceptable as possible when his humanity becomes a bridge for others and their meeting with Christ their Redeemer the redeemer of humanity. St. John Paul II is saying that a priest is most himself when he becomes a gate for Christ.
He says it is especially in his commitment to celibacy that a priest takes on the likeness of Jesus Christ, the good shepherd and the spouse of the church. The Christ-like love at the heart of priestly celibacy leads the priest to a greater and undivided love for Jesus and the church and leads the priest to be a joyful and available man who serves as a wide open gate for others on their own journey towards the Father. All of this is to say is that the priests who live their vocations best are the ones whose lives are open passageways of Jesus Christ's sacrificial love for the human race. The more a priest is known for his being a gateway to Christ, and the less he is known for his personality or his entertainment value or whatever it is, the more effectively that priest is living out his vocation. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, we ask the people of God to pray that we priests may daily grow in our vocation to become ever better gateways towards Jesus Christ. Pray that we may offer clear access to Jesus through the daily celebration of Mass, through sacramental confession, and through the anointing of the sick. Pray that we priests will cater not to the personal preferences of the crowd, but rather to our Lord, who is the only gate to eternal life and pray that all families will be open to the possibility that the Lord of life may be calling their son to serve Jesus faithfully as his priest. The priest's configurement to Christ the gate is a reminder that all Christians themselves are called to be living gates to the Lord. This vocation to image Jesus the gate is nourished through communion with Jesus' sacrifice on the cross the sacrifice we are about to celebrate today in Holy Mass, the Eucharist, the sacramental passageway between the life of God and the life of the church. As we now prepare to join in this Eucharistic sacrifice, gathered around our bishop, we pray that all priests and truly all Christians will imitate Christ the gate and live their lives as wide open doors of God's life-giving love for the world. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ is the Good Shepherd, who knows each one of us by name. As we continue to offer praise to our loving and Good Shepherd, we now ask for what we need, trusting in Christ's love for us. That the Holy Catholic Church, led by our Holy Father, Bishop Burns and Bishop Kelly, may extend the love of the risen Christ by serving those 
who walk in the valley of darkness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus, our Lord, and our loving Good Shepherd will protect those who are vulnerable to the coronavirus and send the Spirit to comfort the afflicted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are struggling with financial and economic hardship and those who are hungry and without help will find work and be able to feed their families again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the five men who were ordained today to the diaconate, that their path to the priesthood may have life to the fullest through their fidelity to the Good Shepherd. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the priests who shepherd and serve our parishes may know the wisdom and guidance of the, Holy, of the Good Shepherd as they navigate the gentle easing of sacramental restrictions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that our beloved dead may rejoice in heaven with God, the shepherd of all souls. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most gentle Father, you guide us along the right path. Your Son is always there beside us. Comfort us by granting these petitions, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord, may the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our, our good, good and good of good all his holy church. Amen. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously. When Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life. And the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death. And in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop, with me your unworthy servant and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
time we will pray our act of spiritual communion recognizing that our desire is to be present to the Eucharist but when we can't we know our God in his mysterious love for us is indeed in communion with us even at a distance and so the prayer is and please join me my Jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I have a couple of announcements. First of all, it's unfortunate that during this time that there may be scam artists who are, uh, present themselves. And indeed, there is um, a certain scam out there with um, uh, my name or my image on it or the Diocese of Dallas. I ask you to please be cautious. And in, in the scam, they ask for gift cards. The Diocese of Dallas, myself, we would never ask for gift cards. If you ever have a question, please, by all means, uh, call the Diocese of Dallas and call our offices. As many of you are aware, this past week, we brought forth a new decree, and the decree is how it is we reopen our churches. And the Diocese of Dallas, we are going to do it in phases. The first phase, which we began this weekend, is that Daily and Sunday Masses remain suspended, but we will embark on individual and family-oriented celebrations of the sacraments, confession, and in particular, ordinations, as well as those men and women who were preparing for the Easter sacraments. This past Easter, at the Easter Vigil, at the Shrine Cathedral of Our Lady of Guadalupe. There were so many people throughout the various churches in our diocese who were scheduled to be welcomed into the church. And our hearts were broken that that could not happen. We find them now in um, a great opportunity to be received into the church by celebrating the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist. That is phase one, and in phase one, with the family-oriented celebrations, that will mean baptisms, weddings, funerals, quinceañeras, and this decree will go until May 18th. Phase two will be the opening of daily masses. It will be sometime after May 18th, but then we will embark on daily masses, we will follow, of course, the civil officials as well as medical um, authorities when looking at all this, making sure that it is safe to do so. And we will subscribe to all the necessary safe distancing and diligent disinfecting of our parishes also. The third phase will then be the opportunity to have Sunday Masses 
Sunday Masses, most likely at that time, will still have some restrictions on them. And the fourth phase is when all restrictions are lifted. That is then the opportunity that we will be able to return to normal. What Father Wade Bass said in his homily about the need for priestly vocations and what Deacon John prayed for in, in the intercessions were the five men who were ordained to the transitional diaconate this weekend. As I mentioned, we're embarking on a new phase, and this new phase sees signs of hope. These five men are scheduled to be ordained to the priesthood next year. They are signs of hope for us. With all of that, we recognize an increased numbers of ordained ministers, and those men and women, our brothers and sisters who are stepping up for the Easter sacraments, the numbers of disciples grow. And for that is truly a sign of hope. And we rejoice in this. Many of you know that I was the bishop in Juneau, Alaska. And after a very long, cold, dark winter, you'd walk outside and all of a sudden you'd look down and you would see a green blade of the crocuses piercing the surface of the snow. Those crocuses are beautiful little yellow flowers, but the snow was still there and they were still tr struggling to come up. My friends, they were a sign of hope for us. And it was great to see those green blades. What I'm saying to you now is, as we start to lift these restrictions, is a sign of hope. It's still gonna take some patience though, because uh, like in Alaska, that cold wasn't over lickety split. It took a while. And so, we just have to be patient, and we're going to continue to be safe. To those five men who are ordained to the transitional diaconate this, this weekend, congratulations. They're Deacon Juan, Deacon Samuel, Deacon Ricardo, Deacon Adam, and Deacon Felipe. And we rejoice with them, and we also rejoice with the men who are considering a priestly vocation. I, of course, want to thank everybody that makes this Mass possible. In particular, our dear friends at Catholic Foundation, and of course, the people and the staff of the Diocese of Dallas. And I'm also grateful for the wonderful hospitality of the people here at St. Monica's. Father Wade Bass, thank you so much for your homily. And through you, express our appreciation to the pastor, Father Guadagnoli, and to Father Paul, and to everyone on the staff here at St. Monica's. Well, I invite you to join us next week because next week we are going to St. Edward's Parish in Dallas and our homilist is going to be Father Arthur Anakuchu. And so we're just very grateful for that and looking forward to being with you next week. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia.